Well, good morning everyone. It's good to join you again uh, for another uh, Tabernacle Baptist Church New Bridge uh, time of devotion. As always, we trust that the Lord will help us and bless us as we prepare uh, for all of the challenges and all of the opportunities that will come our way on this day. Let's pray, shall we? Let's turn to the Lord in prayer. Our gracious, heavenly, loving Father, we thank you again that we can come into your holy presence, not through any merit of our own, but through the wonderful uh, sacrifice of our Lord and Saviour, uh, Jesus Christ, and for his redeeming work on the cross of Calvary. And so we come as sinners, but save sinners if we know Jesus as our personal Lord and Saviour. We want to thank you that you're a God of love and a God of grace, a God of compassion, uh, but you're also a God of judgment and you're a holy God. And when we are in your presence, we know that we stand on holy ground. So help us, Lord, uh, to worship you this morning and to hear what you have to say to each and every one of us. We pray you that your Holy Spirit will move amongst us today and help us to follow the plan that you want us to follow uh, for our daily walk with you. We ask all this in Jesus' lovely name. Amen. Amen. Uh, I just want to read a couple of uh, verses from uh, the Old Testament, from the book of Proverbs, uh, chapter 3. And verses 3 to 6. Let love and faithfulness never leave you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Then you will win favour and a good name in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, Submit to him, and he will make you paths straight. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make straight your paths. Now, chapter 3 of Proverbs is addressed to Solomon's son. The term my son occurs 15 times in chapters 1 to 7. The words may apply to one of Solomon's students in his court or indeed to one of his own family, his biological sons. The application of wisdom in Proverbs chapter 3 shows the benefits of trusting in the Lord with one's whole heart. Solomon credits obedience to and trust in God uh, for long life, for success, for guidance, health, reward that exceeds monetary wealth, enjoyment, peace, security, confidence, excellent human relationships, the Lord's blessing and favour and honour. That's quite a list, isn't it? As with all Proverbs, biblical or otherwise, their purpose is to impart general wisdom, not absolute prophecy, or as we would think, foretelling the future. Like the original audience, modern readers are not expected to see these guidelines as absolute guarantees for any one person. And then we come to the context of uh, these verses, in fact, verses 1 to 12 in Proverbs uh, chapter 3. And here we have this exhortation from Solomon to his son, urging him to heed his teaching and trust wholeheartedly in the Lord. He cites uh, some of the results of obedience and trust. The section builds on the counsel or advice Solomon gave in Proverbs chapter 2. And the following um, 
verses describe the blessings that come to those who find wisdom and understanding. Uh, and then, of course, uh, we have those verses again. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him and he will make your paths straight. If we want perfect uh, direction in life, whether we are buying a house or looking for a, a new, for, sorry, for a husband or a wife, choosing a holiday or planning a holiday, in all our ways, we should acknowledge the Lord. He will not only guide us in the right way but also remove obstacles from our path the apostle james warns, james warns us to consult the lord's will when we need to plan our days this doesn't mean we'll get answers to every question we might ever have one person commented long before the word coronavirus came into our vocabulary that life is already hard and it's only harder when one makes foolish choices. Following God's plan and his will is a good way to avoid added problems, added struggle. We find a good example in Genesis uh, chapter 24 of a person who acknowledged the, the Lord and received perfect guidance. His name is not mentioned in this chapter, but tradition holds that he was Eliezer. He was Abraham's servant who was on a mission to find a suitable bride for Abraham's son Isaac. The servant went to Nahor a city of Mesopotamia, and rested his camels beside a spring of water when the women of the city approached to draw water. He prayed to the Lord for success in finding the right woman for Isaac. The Lord answered his prayer, and Rebekah would soon become Isaac's bride. Abraham's servant praised the Lord for directing him to Rebekah. He said, Blessed be the Lord, the God of my master, Abraham, who has not forsaken his steadfast love and his faithfulness towards my master. As for me, the Lord has led me in the way to the house of my master's Kinsman. We read that in verse 27 of Genesis chapter 24. Well, what is the God's word telling us this morning? Well, it's telling us to ask for God's guidance in making those decisions that we have to make today. Uh, to put our trust in God and to accept and be obedient to his will and to his leading. What decisions are you facing today? Some may be very important. Same, some may just be uh, standard um, decisions, everyday decisions that you have to make. But we are urged in God's word to trust in the Lord with all of our hearts and lean not to our own understanding. We need to submit to him and we need uh, to believe that he will straighten the paths for us today. This is a privilege to be able to speak to you about, uh, about aspects of God's word in these devotions. Uh, but I'm always conscious that maybe there is someone who is watching, who is being challenged by God today. 
um, who has heard the gospel message many, many times, but has still not accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Saviour. And part of our responsibility, those of us who uh, uh, help to share the gospel, is to introduce you uh, to those opportunities when you can accept Jesus. And this is one of them. And so my prayer today is that you will uh, open the door of your heart and your life and accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Saviour. And perhaps there are some who used to follow Jesus but have backslidden, have gone their own way, and now they want to reunite uh, in communion with the Lord. Well, here's your opportunity as well. Why don't you pray this simple prayer after me? Those who do not know Jesus and those who used to know Jesus. Let's pray, shall we? Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner. And I ask for your forgiveness. I turn from my sins and invite you to come into my heart and life. I want to trust and follow you as my Lord and Saviour. I ask these things in your name. Amen. Well, God bless you if you prayed that prayer. prayer. Uh, you will have uh, already experienced Jesus coming back into your heart or coming into your heart and your life for the first time. Hallelujah. What a saviour we have. Please don't keep this good news to yourself. We would strongly recommend that you tell someone and it's a good place to start would be the pastor or one of the leaders of your local gospel preaching church and they will be thrilled to help you and to guide you and to encourage you to nurture you in the faith and of course if you live in the Newbridge area well please contact Tabernacle Baptist Church Newbridge we are opposite Greg's right in the high street why don't you contact our minister the Reverend Peter Cho, or any of the or any of the leaders, and we will be delighted to welcome you and to love you and to nurture you and to accept you into the family of his church. So thank you for listening this morning. Thank you for watching. Let's pray now, shall we, as we close. Father, it's been good to come into your presence this morning. It's been good to be reminded from uh, your your word that we need to trust in the lord with all our hearts and not depend upon our own understanding and it's been good uh, to see how you have directed your servants uh, down through centuries in fact and that you are ready to do the same today and so we all need to humble ourselves before you and to ask for your help for any decisions that we are going to take today. As I say, some may be very important, some may be inconsequential, but nevertheless, we need to put our trust in you and ask for your guidance and your help. Lord, we do uh, pray for our leaders. We pray for Boris Johnson and the government in Westminster, and we pray for Mark Drake, Drakeford and the Welsh Government. And we pray that all of the decisions that are going to be made today and on into the future will be in accordance with your will and to your glory, even if they are not aware of you. Lord, we believe that your hand is upon us, uh, not just as individuals, but as a people and as a nation. We pray for Wales. We thank you for this lovely country. And we thank you for the communities in which we live. And we ask, Lord, that you will continue to bless us. Because we ask all these things, as always, seeking the forgiveness of our many sins. In Jesus' name.
Amen.